the oldest theater in Montclair, New Jersey, up next on Carpe Diem. Hello and welcome to Carpe Diem. I'm your host, Erica Hernandez. Joining me today are the owners of the Old Mogul Theater, Joanne Smalls and Kasim Mirza. The theater is the oldest in Montclair, New Jersey. It originally opened in 1920, but was closed due to a high crime rate in the area. In recent years, the theater has been refurbished and had its grand reopening in December of 2015. Joanne and Kasim are here to talk about their hopes of uplifting the community with good music and unique art. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. How are you guys today? Great. Great. So Kasim, let's start with you. When did the theater originally open? Uh, the theater opened in the early 1900s. Um, it's got a long hundred year history um, and it's always been a, an art space and a space for expression and creativity. It was a dance hall for many years okay. and um, in the 1980s it was an artist space, a studio where one of the uh, world famous artists named Don Miller, he's since passed away but um, in the 80s that was his studio and he created some um, amazing portraits and one famous mural <clears throat> that's now hanging in uh, Washington DC's public library of Dr. Martin Luther King um, so it was, yeah, it's got a lot of history, that theater. Uh, do you know, like, the owners that previously were owners of the theater, and have you spoken to them about how to help you out with it now? Uh, yeah, we've spoken to a lot of people who've, um, who used to use the theater, the owners and the, the operators of the space. Um, like I said, Don Miller um, has since passed away. He was a nationally recognized um, artist. His wife is still alive. Um, and we actually, and she lives in Montclair. So we went and um, spoke to her and she was very supportive. She was incredibly happy with what we were doing, um, revitalizing, renovating, restoring the theater. Um, and it was actually, it was a, a landmark. They did a, sh a show similar to this. Um, on Sunday morning, there was a, there used to be a show during that time, um, <clears throat> uh, Like It Is, it was filmed, it was an ABC show, which they actually filmed in the theater. Um, and Rosa, Rosa Parks, the freedom, uh, you know, the civil rights activist, of course, right. um, she came to the, to the theater and they did a, a, a television show film there as well. Um, so yeah, we learned a lot about what's going on there and there's been a, uh, some rich history. Awesome. That's mm -hmm. great. So Joanne, tell me why you guys decided to start up the Old Mogul again. Um, I think um, Kazim approached me and um, he knew that I was currently working in uh, the music industry and uh, doing some overall arts projects in uh, Montclair. I'm also on the board of the Montclair Center bid, so uh, I do the Montclair Center stage um, on Church Street, and you know uh, it'll also be on Glenridge Avenue uh, this year. So um, he began to express how his parents and he also had a vision of seeing the theater operate as a working art space and as a uh, live music theater. So we kind of put our heads together and we came up with um, a lot of thoughts and we put those thoughts into actions and that's how the Old Mogul Theater was created. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So Kasim, tell me what changes have been made since the reopening of this theater? A lot of changes. Um, uh, we've got a theater quality sound system. We've got um, you know brand new li a light show, which is pretty impressive considering we're a mid-sized theater. Uh, we've got a pretty good uh, light lighting system. Um, you know, apart from the lighting and the sound, we made some nice modifications inside the space. Like we redid these beautiful maple wood floors that you can't get floors like that anymore. They only made you know they made this building a hundred years ago, right. and a lot of the stuff that they used back then you can't find anymore. So there were certainly some challenges. 
um, you know, in, in restoring the old space. It's an old, old building, so it had old building problems. Um, but we, we changed as much as we could in as fast of a time as we could. Um, a lot of renovations inside. Um, but we're not, we're not complete yet with the renovations, but I think we've come a long way. Great. And I know that when I was speaking to Joanne and communicating with her, she was telling me, telling me about internships. So speak, knowing that there's new sound systems in the theater and there's new lights, do interns are involved with like doing lighting and sound design in the theater? Well, currently right now we have one intern. Uh, from, he is from MSU. And I have a, submitted uh, for uh, more interns for the summer. So we're still waiting on a reply. But yes, anybody um, interested in, t in the internship in the music or uh, arts, you know, sound engineer, theater, uh, see us. Come see us. Great. Yeah. So what do you think the interns will get out of that experience, especially since it's the oldest theater in Montclair? I think hands-on experience is the best internship you can ever have to actually learn um, you know, a field that you have interest and then work in the field. I think that um, a lot of internships, um, they've given a lot of information, but everybody kind of wants to do it, get to the part where you're actually doing it and you're working it and you're feeling like a team and a part of it. And I think that that's what me and Chasm offer to uh, any of the students that want to come and do an internship with us to actually get in the field, see it, you know, live it, and um, and learn the, um, a field that, that primarily people feel that's hard to get into, the arts, you know. Not many doors are open, but um, but if we can open a few doors, we want to do that. Yeah. That sounds like a great opportunity. And Kasim, what is your favorite part of working in this theater? Uh, it's exciting because I was born and raised in Montclair, and this part of Montclair is in an area which historically hasn't has been underappreciated. Um, most of Montclair, everybody knows the restaurants, the nightlife. Um, you know, it's got a lot to offer. Beautiful homes in Montclair. This part of town has historically, as you mentioned earlier, there's been most most of the crime has been in this part of the town. But the most exciting thing is that it's really um, uplifting quite a bit. It's exciting to see the transformation of what it was before and what it is now and the potential of what we have to create in the future with the old mobile theater being a key, um, key part of the, the future. Great. Uh, Joanne, have there been any challenges um, from reopening the theater? I mean, some of the challenges is that the, you know, the theater is, is from the 1900s and we want it to allow the theater to have is original feel, you know, feel to the theater. We didn't want to change it up a lot, like, you know, bring down, we wanted to, if there was a hole in the wall, we wanted to have professionals plaster it and, 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 and leave the remaining original, um, you know, history to the building. So some of the, the challenges were to, if we were going to make changes, we wanted to leave it as, as original as we can, you know, um, and uh, you, you have that when you walk into the space, you feel um, that there were artists here before us, you know, that came along. And uh, we're just coming and we're just um, letting it be seen and we're allowing it to uh, be viewed by people that are coming in. They're like, how long has this building been here? How long has this been? It's just a gem, it really is. So some of the challenges were just um, making the space work for live music and and it does work well you know um like i said it's an original um you know venue and uh we're bringing a little bit of of that back to life in montclair that's awesome yeah. and kasim feeding off from what joanne said do you feel like there's some challenges that she doesn't face as the owner do you have any challenges yourself uh unique challenges <clears throat> I would say um, they they say that uh, you know having good help is hard to find, and um, I think it's true. Being that we're you know a unique sort of a um, music industry related art uh, space, and we're trying to run a, uh, an art business where historically it's you know it's difficult to run any business, let alone arts and music. Uh, the challenge is having good you know reliable people around us because. Really, um, you know, having a good team is, is the difference between, uh, you know, having a successful uh, business and, 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 you know, the, uh, 
the level of success can, can be not so good if you don't have a good team. So, you know, the, the unique challenge for me has really just been making sure we have a good team of people, um, you know, every day ready to work, work hard and, you know, understand the nuances of the business and the music industry and, um, you know, to help us build something long lasting. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that's part of the reason why we're here at MSU. And, um, uh, you know, we put in for the request for, for good interns from MSU, I think. You know, if we have good help from the music department, we've reached out to the music department, the, you know, graphic design, um, marketing. If, you know, there are students out there, I'm sure there's a lot of talent on campus, um, and, and we have a place for them. Great. And with challenges, you know, there's obstacles, yeah. But what goals do you have to, f to overcome those challenges for the theater? Um, yeah, I think it comes back to the people, you know, having good people around us um, and creating processes that everybody knows what their role is and, you know, um, everybody, we have the, the right people in place to fill those roles. And then maintaining a standard. Like, so far, we've only been open since December, but we've had some really great quality bands come and perform, you know, from all over, um, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, all over the tri-state. Um, and so the talent is there. We have real talent who's who's graced our stage already. Um, but just creating the processes to help get the word out, um, you know, the, the marketing that needs to be in place, I think that'll help a lot. Because we, we really do have a lot to offer. And the bands that, that uh, Joanne's been bringing in and we've been working with our bookers to bring in have been excellent. Great. And Joanne, since you're in charge of like the booking and making sure that the bands make it to the old mobile theater, who do you reach out to and what specific genre do you reach out to so that they could come to the old mogul and perform? Well, I mean, we're open to all genres. I mean, we are working with Spatters Studios, which is uh, Louis, which is one of our bookers. We were also working uh, before with Chris Stillmack, which brought wonderful quality bands to uh, the old mogul theater. Um, the, we get a lot of bands that submit you know, through our emails requesting to perform at the old mogul through our website and um, and it's wonderful the amount of people that do submit and that are are interested in playing at the old mogul theater i mean currently right now we are uh, you know experiencing a lot of the indie rock bands but um we are really open up to any um genre i mean uh, today in fact we have reverse order that's uh performing um at the old mogul theater so Anybody wants to come out? Come out. There's a show today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but but uh, concerning genres are, are wonderful. We're finding to be that mufflers that they're very open to music and they're very willing to go to a show. So um, being open to, to booking different genres is something that um, we're open to. You look doing. forward to mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So great because we actually were able to visit the old mogul and see the artists themselves. A few of them that were there. It is the artists and their fans that continue to help bring the old mogul to life. We had the opportunity to visit the theater, enjoy some live tunes, and meet some upcoming artists. Let's take a look. When you stick it to karma, karma sticks it to your heart. Give me a shot. I heard about the theater because I heard that a band that I really like called Pine Grove was playing here and that was like exciting and I wanted to go see them. Honestly just the fact that it's open that it opens its doors to a lot of lesser known acts. Um, as much as there are national kind of touring acts that come through here, they always open the door to have, you know, local openers or this is all this show in particular is an all local show, so I, I think that that's really cool. The staff is extremely welcoming and it's a really cool like all ages space, which unfortunately in New Jersey I'm dying a little bit. Uh, I understand it's it's really difficult. Um, Keeping a scene alive, especially if there's no alcohol, and, or like it's like a bar or something, um, but they're keeping it alive. They're, uh, you know, doing it for the love of music and bringing in really, really cool bands and stuff. So it's been really awesome to be a part of it and uh, be able to play here. Mr. Ken, right? 
way through you. Chris, he's been putting on a lot of the shows here. Like he's been doing a great job bringing in bands that are doing really cool and interesting things. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to to keep playing here and seeing cool acts come through. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really cool and special. <laughs> what makes it special is just it's just the atmosphere. There's not like. It's not like this very concert hall, like, are you ready? But it's also not like the people on stage are just gonna stand there and like adjust their like guitars and stuff. But it's also like, it seems like they're not as nervous as like if you put them on a stage with a bajillion people or if you put them on a stage with like two people. I think this is a really cool spot and I'd love to see it flourish because I think that there's definitely room for a music scene in Montclair and um, I think I think bands like Pine Grove are, are proving that, and I mean it's a college area, so hopefully the college kids will follow suit with you know the music scene and, and come out and support and help this place turn into something like really awesome. Welcome back. Now we're going to speak about the f events that are coming up for, at the Old Mogul Theater. Kasim, can you tell us about what to expect? in the summer. Yeah, the summer summer is concert season. As you know, that's um, you know, people are off from school, from uh, you know, from their from their jobs, they take, you know, time off to uh, enjoy the summer. So we're really, really looking forward to the summer concert series. The weekend, you know, the weather's great. Um, so we're we're looking to pack the summer with some great shows. Um, we have uh, our full calendar will be on our website oldmogultheater.com, but just off the top of my head, I know we have a few good shows coming up, um, like the Jason Didner show. Um, he he caters to families, um, and it's uh, he's always packs the house and puts on a great show. Um, yeah, we have we have many great bands from several several different genres, um, mostly rock, mostly rock. But as Joanne said, we're open to all different genre, genres. So yeah, we're gonna have a, a fun, action-packed, um, full of you know weekend summer weekend nights that are gonna be. Uh, Really good. Great. I would love to go to one of your You're events. invited. And how does promotion work, Joanne? Because I know, like, you go after the artist, but do they come to you for an opportunity to perform at the Old Mogul Theater? So how does that mm -hmm. work? Um, a lot of them are submitting through our website so um, and emailing us. So a lot of bands do come to us. But we are working with Spatter Studios, uh, which is uh, Lewis, which he will actually go directly to the agencies uh, or, you know, reach out to the agents to get bigger name bands. Um, we seem to be drawing a lot of the college crowd, <laughs> so, you know, and a lot of the younger crowds, um, but we are open to every genre, every age. Uh, we're doing different shows. Uh, where you're doing private rentals, and uh, it's going really well. Great. Yeah. So my question to you is, when you started out, the theater, right? Was the college student age group the target audience? It wasn't, but it seemed to happen to be that way. Um, we've booked wonderful bands um, like Pine Grove that uh, definitely brought a lot of the college crowds there. That was a sold out show, did very well. Um, they're a great band and amazing and from Montclair. So um, we, not necessarily that we have in mind to target the college crowd, but it worked out that way and I kind of like it. So, um, and we saw a lot of students from MSU there, so uh, coming to shows. Okay. And our shows are very affordable, you know. Tickets range from 12 to $15. You know? Oh, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. But so your target audience was what age group and what kind of music were you um, planning to provide for that group? Anywhere from 18 to about 35, we saw um, in some of the uh, indie rock bands. Um, we saw a lot of college students there. We saw some high school students there. So we are um, all ages. Um, if there's a show that isn't all ages, we, we will post it on our website. Um, there are other shows that we will be doing, which uh, would be a tribute to the Beatles that will be coming up soon, which we'll see an older uh, you know, age. But of course, all ages are also um, invited to attend. Great. Yeah. Kasim, how has the community responded? to the theater? It's been wonderful. I, I spoke to um, Mayor Jackson at our ribbon cutting ceremony. We had a ribbon, you know, uh, cutting the mayor of Montclair uh, was there and he gave us his blessings as well as the other council men and women who serve the township of Montclair. 
Everyone sees it as a, um, the theater as, as a key landmark that can really help transform the area. So the community has embraced us completely. A lot of people were um, supportive and excited from day one. Um, and we had, we had a good turnout, you know, from our, from our opening month until now we've had good turnouts from people who were just from the community interested in seeing what we were all about, who didn't even know the theater existed uh, before, before we came around. Um, so yeah, we've gotten great um, attention in the media, we've been all over uh, the media. This is the first time we've been, you know, at Montclair State doing something like this, which is just excellent. Um, but we've, we've been embraced by the Montclair community of, of the township through the, through the local media as well. So everyone, everyone's been pretty excited about what we're, what we're doing there. It's different, it's kind of hip, you know, people, people really took on to it early. Um, so we're hoping to build on that momentum and really keep it going through the summer. Like we opened in the winter time, which is historically a low, low for concerts. Mm -hmm. Summer is really That's when it's supposed to, you know, we're, we're anticipating that it picks up. Um, so we're really trying to build on the early momentum that we had from our grand opening with the mayor coming to our ribbon cutting ceremony and everything. I believe that it's good that you guys opened in the winter because it has drawn a, a bit of audience. Mm -hmm. So now that audience is gonna tell people about the summer, which is great. You, so that's something I believe. Also, being that we're talking about the summer months, I heard that you guys have a farm stand. Joanne, do you think you could tell us a little bit more about that? Well, that's Mark Hasm. Um, he started um, a farmer's market um, and originally started on the second floor venue, but went down to the first floor where the um, Caribbean Grill restaurant is at. It was easier for the farmers to load in there. But I think that he can give you a little more information on that farmer's market that was being held. Uh, it was uh, his idea and his project. Okay, so tell, Kasim, tell us a little bit more about the farmer's market. Okay, yeah, so um, I always, um, since I graduated medical school and learned about um, diet and nutrition and the you know, optimal diet to live the longest and be the healthiest, um, organic fresh produce seemed to be um, you know, the best way to, to go about it, as opposed to prescribing medications, which I've, you know, in med school and in training, I've, we've done a lot of that. But the, uh, the farmer's market um, started out um, on the second floor venue the, at the Old Mogul Theater. Uh, we got farmers from, from New Jersey. It was all local, fresh produce and organic. Um, and I felt like um, I, I wanted to do it just because I have the medical background and I really believe in health and organic, um, you know, produce, produce being the, uh, the staple in, in, in your ideal diet in order to, to uh, you know, have optimal health. So that's why I did it. And the theater space was large, open, airy, brand newly renovated. So it seemed like a good idea to do it there. I ran into some challenges though because it was on the second floor and the farmers were, they, they, it was difficult to carry all that produce up and down, up and down the stairs. So we moved it to the first floor where okay. there's, a, there's actually a restaurant there. Um, <clears throat> so now the farmer's market is downstairs on the first floor, but it'll be, it'll, it's closed. It was open for the winter time. It'll be opening up again, um, and I'll, I'll probably put it in the news when it's out, okay. open again. Do you have an idea of like which month you prefer, <coughs> like let's say May, June? Yeah, I'm planning to open up in the fall, and I'm planning oh, to open up, uh, yeah, planning to open up again in the fall, like September. Okay, so before we end the show, I would like to get a little unique, taste of the old mogul theater and what theater lovers should know about this theater so something unique about it let's start with joanne all right so i'm the old mogul theater is for me it's like no other theater i mean it's an art space um even after the shows we find to be that our customers don't want to leave <laughs> they're lingering around they want to stay um they want to express their thoughts and their visions um about the arts in Montclair. They, you know, we've gotten really good feedback from people that wanted a space like this in Montclair. They wanted a space with, uh, you know, original local, you know, artists and, and bands, you know, from New Jersey, from out of New Jersey that have came through, uh, you know, we've touring bands that will play there. And basically it's just a space where you can come and you can express your God-given talent, you know, and share it with the, the community and and the public, and um, it's just it's just a wonderful space for artists to be in. 
and you're going to see a lot more new things coming up soon. I look forward to yeah. that, definitely. What about you, Kasim? Tell us a little bit. What makes it unique and why you feel like you belong to this theater? Oh, thanks for asking, Erica. That's a good question. I think that um, Joanne took the perspective of the artist. I'll take the perspective of the fans. For the fans, you feel the experience. It's, it's like... It's worth every every penny, if you ask me. You know, for a twelve to fifteen dollar ticket, you get to be up close. You know, n even if you're all the way in the last, in the back, you're no more than thirty feet away from the artist. It's a it's a small like mid sized space, I'll say. So you're you're always really close and intimate with the artist. You can make eye contact with them. They're making the artist is making eye contact with you. The it's it's a medium sized space, so you feel it. You feel the music. You can really feel it reverberating through your body. Um, and that personal connection, that intimate concert feel that you get from our theater is like none other. Because most of the other theaters out there are, are a lot bigger, you know, they're, they're larger in size. You don't have that intimate connection like we have. Um, and as, as, a, as an intern or somebody working um, inside the theater, it's also, it, it makes it unique because like Joanne said, after the show, people don't want to leave. We've seen that, you know, people like to hang out talk, mingle, you know, um, get to know each other better. It seems to be um, a great place to hang out. So it's fun to work there. Awesome. Um, this has been an interesting conversation with you guys, and I look forward to visiting the theater since it's like 10 minutes away from my house. So I look forward to going on your Facebook page and looking up events that are coming up, especially in the summer. Yeah. So thank you for coming today. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us, Erica. Thanks, Erica. You're welcome. The Old Mogul Theater is located on 180 Bloomfield Avenue, Montclair, New Jersey. If you are interested in visiting the Old Mogul, you can call at 973-449-5294 or visit the website on your screen. You can also check them out on Facebook and Twitter for any upcoming events. If you would like more information about this Carpe Diem or any other Carpe Diem, you can write us at the ad email address on your screen, carpediem at mel.montclair.edu, or call us at 973-655-5158. For Carpe Diem, I'm Erica Hernandez. Thanks for watching.